Okay. Let's uh, let's get ready for let's begin lecture. Let's get going. Uh, we're going to do some work today on the homework number nine, which was kind of a little semi brain burner for you. Although I think a bunch of you got it correct. Um, and that's going to lead into the classic heat melt heat problem that I set up every semester pretty much um, as a good example of a calculation that's realistic that scientists and engineers use uh, and that you guys can do. Uh, so let's get to it. Now, um, last time we worked with this table of specific heats and melting points. I'm going to ask you a clicker question. Go ahead and get your clickers ready. Uh, we've got a bunch of clickers, clicker questions today. Um, and make sure you have this table jotted down. I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, and you, because, you know, the, in the heat melt heat problem, you have to pay attention to freezing point, melting point, and where that is in the temperature range of the ice that we're going to melt. And so uh, it's a, you know, and every heat melt heat problem is a little different. So um, here's your first question. Uh, here's the, uh, the table, same table, you can keep copying it. Uh, copper is easier to heat up gram for gram. Why is that? Because what? Go ahead and vote, read carefully and make a vote. Bailey, got your clicker? Let's go. Desiree, let's go. Time to click. How would you explain this fact that copper is easy? I mean, I, I got you a couple concepts there. Okay, 15 seconds to vote. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Boy, we're missing a lot of students. Okay, take a look at what you guys voted for. Uh, correct answer is B. Um, yeah, that's what the specific heat encodes. One of the things, you know, there's other properties of physical substances, material substances, and, you know, like the, the melting point, freezing point. You know, that's, that's, the, the, that has to do with, um, how strong the, the uh, crystalline bonds are for whatever the substance is that you're trying to freeze or melt. And, uh, but that's slightly different from the property of being able to, to change temperature. Now, next question. So this is question two for today. You guys are catching up with section one. True or false?
Hopefully this one is cinchy. I hope so. Okay, 15 seconds to vote. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Yeah, this is true. And that's something I want you to try to remember that calorie it's defined in terms of water, but it's 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 an energy unit in the metric system. All right, another question. Multiple choice. And hopefully this one will be easy too. We're clicking. Okay. Ten seconds to vote. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Uh, yeah, most of you got that one, 95%. Uh, 4.184 joules of energy. Now, I want to bring up something at this point, uh, just to refresh your memory. Last time I talked about James Prescott Joule and his special experiment. He, he took a, a container of water and he set up some paddle wheels in it. And he, with those paddle wheels, he added kinetic energy to the water. I mean, it started out still water and then he got it, he added kinetic energy to it. And as he did, he kept track of the temperature of the water with a thermometer. And he kept track of how much kinetic energy he transferred from the water, from the paddles to the liquid water by um, just doing MGH. You know, he had a certain weight, you know, uh, half, a, half a kilogram or whatever it was, and a certain drop distance. So that corresponds to a certain number of joules. And he was able to figure out, okay, for every degree and every gram of water, so much temperature rise per joule, All right? And so this equivalence one calorie, which is thermally defined, and one joule, which is what we would say kinematically defined in terms of mass, distance, and speed. Uh, those are equivalent. You know, this is the equivalence. One calorie, thermally defined, is 4.184 joules of any kind of energy you may want to consider: electrostatic potential energy, gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy. Or, you know, radiant energy, solar energy from the sun, you know, heating something up. Now, um, here's, our, here's another th uh, blurb I want to make sure you're aware of. When we're working in this class on heat energy examples and concepts, we're mostly going to be working in calories and grams. All right, because the calories defined in terms of a a gram of liquid water and how it changes temperature. And so we're usually going to be working with things defined in terms of calories and grams. Now you can easily do the same calculations in joules and kilograms of mass. All right. And sometimes you, and I'll, I'll show you one little uh, thermal coefficient today that's defined in joules and calories. Uh, so uh, 
So anyways, we're mostly going to be doing calories and grams uh, in our calculations. Now, I want to take a look at homework 15, number 9. And I want to reinforce some of the concepts behind it. Um, because those concepts, I set that up as a challenge problem for you to lead into our main topic for today, which is the heat melt heat problem. A classic brain burner, not difficult in itself to calculate, but kind of tricky sometimes to keep organized with. So we're going to go through that nice and slow. Let's start with uh, chapter or uh, homework 15, problem number nine. One ingot of aluminum, one gram. And that problem was to heat it up from some temperature like 820 up to the melting point 933. Now, uh, one of the specs that you needed for that problem, uh, which I mentioned in discussions, uh, one of the students asked about it, uh, the specific heat. The specific heat encodes the amount of energy it takes to raise a gram of some substance by a Kelvin. So in the case of aluminum, for one gram of aluminum, it takes 0.215 calories to bring it up one kelvin all right that's how we define specific heat now if you've got gold it's a different number if you've got water it's a different number if you've got frozen water it's different from liquid water all right so you just have to pay attention each material substance uh, potentially has a, a unique specific heat so for aluminum solid aluminum it's 0 0.215 calories per gram Kelvin. All right, so let's say that we want to heat it up. And I'm going to ask you a clicker question, a couple clicker questions here in a, in a minute based on this series of slides. You heat it up by one Kelvin. All right, and so here's your, over here on the temperature scale on the right, I very carefully laid this out. It's all precise. And I just got my, my new temperature, 821, initial temperature, 820. I raise it up one Kelvin, just a smidgen, all right? And my, my lines down here, very close together. But you can distinguish them, all right? And so that's one Kelvin up on the temperature scale. So how much energy does it take to do that in calories? Well, one gram needs 0 0.215 calories. If it's a gram of aluminum, uh, to go up by that amount, all right? Now, what if you want to go up? So go ahead and jot that down. That's the basic. That's your, if, if you could keep this in mind, you could figure out any heating and cooling uh, energy calculation. I mean, because it's all, they're all going to be similar. And I'll give you the general formula in a few minutes. I just got to, I got to turn my phone off. Hold on a second. I don't want Siri to overhear what we're talking about. Uh, all right. So how about, how about this? How about we bring it up to Kelvin? What about that? All right. So let me bring it up over here on the right. Or okay. Up to 822. My temperature lines start and finish are a little bit further apart and I just kind of smidgened that one up a little bit and so um, how do you figure that one out? well one gram needs 0.215 calories so the two the total is 0 0.430 because you're going up two kelvins All right, so you know 0.215 for the first Kelvin, another 0.215 for the next Kelvin, all right? If it's aluminum and if it's one gram, all right? Now let's extend this process, all right? What if you want to go up three Kelvin? Well, here's your, your temperature displacement. I placed this very carefully, 823. Just a, another smidgen upward on the temperature scale. And, you know, you could do this all the way up to 933, the melting point. You know, it's, I mean, there's a, there's a fairly 
easy pattern here. All right. So uh, one gram needs another 0.215. So now the total is 0 0.645 calories. To go up for one gram of aluminum by three Kelvin. All right. And then and that now in your notes, write down etc. 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 Okay, because it just, you know, every Kelvin just add another 0.215. If you got a hundred Kelvins, a hundred times 0.215. Okay, so that's how that goes. Now what if you have more than one ingot? How do you handle that? Well, it's not too bodacious. Let's take a look. Here's two ingots. Now your total is two grams. All right, and let's say that you want it, okay, starting at good old 820 Kelvin. And you want to inch it up one Kelvin to 821. Here it is, measured precisely. Your first smidgen up one Kelvin, um, each gram needs 0.215, so the total is 0 0.215 plus 0 0.215, one for each gram. You're going up one Kelvin, but you got two grams, you know, so you got to add, you know, double. All right, one gram it would just be 0 0.215, but if you got two grams, they each need 0 0.215, so total is 0 0.430. Oh, and by the way, guys, this symbol Q that I'm using is the customary symbol or one of the customary symbols that we scientists use for heat energy, right? Kinetic energy, you know what the customary symbol is? Instead of, you know, I use KE, but most of the time in um, equations, we just you want to use one letter or symbol. Yeah. And a lot of times in uh, equations, kinetic energy has the letter T. I don't know why, but, and potential energy has the letter U. Um, so you could have gravitational potential energy symbolized with the letter U, and maybe a subscript G. And electrical potential energy, capital U with a subscript E etc. Okay, heat energy is usually Q. But there's other symbols that they use, but we're going to use Q to, to um, symbolize the, an amount of heat energy, usually in calories. All right, so two grams up by one Kelvin. All right, let's bring it up to Kelvin. All right, we got two grams, bring it up to Kelvin's. Here's my smidgen upward a little bit more, up to 822. Nothing, no, nothing hidden up my sleeve. Just going nice and easy here. And each gram needs 0 0.430 to get up by 2 Kelvin, which is what we saw you know, a couple slides ago. All right, so total is 0 0.860. You know, one gram, if you want to go up, if you have one gram, you want to go up two Kelvins, if it's aluminum, 0 0.430 calories. You know, if you, and that's, so that's per gram. So just multiply by how many grams you got, and that's, that's how much energy you need, if you're going up two Kelvin. Now, I'm going to ask you a clicker question. And this is the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera part, okay? So we've done two, kil we've done two grams, aluminum, and we boosted it up by two Kelvin. Okay, my wonderful students, how about three Kelvin? Read carefully and make a decision. And do not... Let me catch you napping. You know, sometimes I'm in, I'm teaching class in a big class like this. A lot of times somebody will doze off in class. But I don't see anybody doozing and snoozing right now. And I don't usually mind. 
I see one guy with his eye, one eye closed and one with one eye open. All right. Try to fake me out. You know, some instructors hate it when somebody goes to sleep in their class. But I don't, I don't usually mind it. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's take a look at what you got. Correct answer is E, none of the above. And if, and you know what? Look at this. Look at this one right here, C. Mighty tempting. And I tempted 32%. Now, nobody got a majority, but E is elected. You got 49, more than anybody else, 49%. Let's go back to the... So here's the... Let me go back here. The answer is none of the above. And C is three times 0.215. That's nice. But that's for one gram. All right. So now hit the refresh key because we're going to do a calculation together. What's the answer? You're going to calculate it now. Okay, go ahead and calculate it. Hit the refresh key and you'll have numeric input. And remember to round off carefully. I want something, point, something, something, something. For your answer. Okay, 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, hurry up, 1, Zero. Click. Um, you guys did good. Some of you didn't get it right. All you got to do is multiply 0 0.430 calories per Kelvin by how many Kelvins you're, you're rising. All right, so jot down this calculation. This is kind of halfway to the heat melt heat problem. So basically, for this problem, 0 0.430, that'll do for, for uh, 2 grams by 1 Kelvin. Easy. But if you're going up 3 Kelvins, you've got to multiply by 3. Now, notice in this, I mean, it's not, you could do this one in your head. You don't have to calculate anything but if you lay it out this way you can see that kelvins cancel top and bottom all right which is good and then but the thing that doesn't cancel out 
is calories, which, you know, that's good. We want an energy unit, metric energy unit left over and uncanceled because we're searching for an amount of energy. And you just multiply it out. So your answer, 1.290. There we go. All right. Now, questions about that calculation. What's that? Uh, yeah, this time. I should have made a different. If, if I'd done copper like I was thinking about doing, then you'd have to use three significant fee, three digit decimals. Sidora, question. Yeah, none of the above is because 1.290 wasn't on the previous question. Okay, so the, the previous question was like 0 0.215, 0 0.430, 0 0.645, and 0 0.860, I think. And then none of the above. And none of the above was correct because this number was not on the previous question. All right. Now, let's go and we're, we're going to put together the general equation now that you use for anything. You know, for, for you know, any number of calorie or any number of grams, any number of kelvins, heating or cooling. You know, if it's cooling, then delta T is negatory. That's all right. So the amount of energy Q, the total energy budget for this process of heating or cooling you have to take into account what the material is. Is it copper? Is it gold? Is it water? Is it solid water? Is it liquid water? Is it liquid gold that's been melted? You know, because that's going to have a different specific heat. C. So melted gold in liquid form is going to have a different specific heat than solid gold that's still solid, that hasn't melted. And you've got to bring it up to a high temperature if it's gold. All right, so you've got to take all that into account. You've got to take into account how much of it you've got. You know, the specific heat tells you how much energy for one gram and one Kelvin. Right, so if you have more than one gram, you've got to be able to deal with the mass, M. And this is going to be a number for us that we're going, to, you know, we're going to say, you know, 120 grams or whatever the mass is. All right. And then the third thing you've got to keep into account is you, how much you're cooling it off or, you know, uh, heating it up. All right. So how many Kelvins are you going upward? How many Kelvins are you going downward if you're cooling? Now, this is where a negative sign comes into the calculation. If you're cooling it off, you get a minus sign because everything else is positive. You know, specific heat is positive and uh, mass is positive. But delta T can be negative if it's cooling. So if you get negative Q, that means that you've lost energy or you have to remove that many calories or joules in order to get to the new temperature. You know, so if you want to dip three, you got to put in minus three Kelvin and then calculate. And that'll tell you how much your uh, refrigeration unit has to evacuate uh, from your refrigerator for whatever you got in there. And then the other thing that you have to factor in, and this is not, it doesn't enter the equation, but you have to, Actually, it kind of does because um, if, your, if your change of temperature goes from below the phase transition, like 273 for water, to above the phase transition, liquid water, then you've, you've got to do things a little differently. So, uh, and at the phase change from liquid to solid, from liquid to gaseous, you know, that's vaporization. You've got a different and a separate calculation. You don't use 
this equation. This is the equation that you'll use for heating. The heating or cooling energy requirement is mc delta t, mass m in grams usually for us in this class. But you know, guys down at Hughes at Mission Control or out in California, you know, designing some spacecraft, you know, they might be working in gram kilograms and stuff because they got a pretty big device. You know, if they're going to re-enter something through the atmosphere, you know, like the space shuttle, that's, that's not kilograms, that's uh, metric tons, that thing. That's a big, monstrous piece of equipment. But anyways, for us, it's mass in grams. Specific heat in gr calories per gram Kelvin. And then delta T in, in Kelvins. Could be positive, could be negative, depending if you're heating or cooling. All right? And here's what happens if you're... If your final temperature is above the phase transition, you know, so if you start at 268 Kelvin and you finish at 302, that's above the freezing point, and 268 is below the freezing point, you've got two different delta T's to take care of. So D is like saying, all right, I gotta be aware, I can't, I can't take the same MC delta T through a phase transition. I've got to break it up into two Q equals MC delta T's. And that's what the heat melt heat problem is about. Now, that's why I usually put melting points on um, on a, a table that you're, you're going to work with, and which, was, which is what we've got here. Now, that whole idea of melting points if you were, you know, if you had um, a chunk of ice at like 250 Kelvin below the freezing point and you put it on the stove and you kept a thermometer on it, you'd see it go up to 250, 251, 252, 253, and on up to 273 as you kept the burner on. But then once it got to 273, it would start to melt and then it wouldn't, the temperature wouldn't change until all of it's melted, and then the liquid water starts to go 274, 275, you know, however high you want to take it. So that phase transition point from solid to liquid or from liquid to gaseous for steam um, is a separate calculation. And basically, so take a note of what I'm about to say. The difference between solid and liquid is this. Solid ice has crystalline bonds. Every molecule is bound to another few molecules by crystalline bonds, and they're fairly tough. It takes a little bit of energy to you know, do the Bruce Lee number, the Chuck Norris effect, and bust them up. You know, so just like Chuck Norris busting up criminal enterprise. For ice, you got to bust up those crystalline bonds. And then you have liquid bonds, you know, a weak liquid bond, you know, forming droplets and stuff. But that quantity is called the latent heat. And in the case of solid to liquid, liquid to solid, that's called latent heat of fusion. You know, or the latent heat of freezing, the latent heat of melting. In general, the latent heat of fusion. And that's the work that's needed to break apart those bonds. And every gram of ice has a certain number of protons and, and, and it has a certain number of H2O atoms or uh, molecules. And each H2O has a certain number of protons and neutrons in every H2O. Let's see, there's, there's two H's and there's one O, so that's about 18. Uh, molecular units of mass, 18 atomic mass units for every uh, molecule of H2O. All right, so, and each, so gram for gram, it's going to be so many molecular bonds, and they've all got to be busted apart, and then you've got a liquid, and then the liquid has weak hydrogen bonding. It forms droplets, but not nice square or hexagonal crystals. Right, so, so it varies 
it varies gram for gram. So the latent heat of fusion is a number of calories per gram. So all you got to do is figure out, all right, what's my latent heat of fusion? Seven, per gram, seven calories per gram. Okay, and I have 22 grams. Okay, seven times 22. And that's how many calories you need for that substance. Here's a, here's a table from a recent examination, and I blew it up a little bit. So that's like, I don't know, a couple, three semesters ago. And you can see here that I have liquid and solid H2O. And I don't have copper. I have gold, silver, and aluminum down there. And notice that I've rounded 0 0.215 from, from the other day down to 0 0.22. So whatever I give you on the table, that's what you should use. This is two significant figures. And I've got melting points listed. 933 Kelvin for aluminum. And then the latent heat of fusion. So this is the Chuck Norris bust apart factor. You're busting those metallic bonds between the aluminum atoms. So now you have liquid aluminum. You're busting up the metallic bonds between silver atoms. And so now you have melted molten silver. You're busting up 15 calories for every gram of gold. And so now you have liquid gold. You could pour it. It's molten. Sedora. From solid to liquid. The difference between solid and liquid is a solid is bonded by very strong molecular bonding. It's, it's either crystalline or metallic. Metallic bonds are considered a little bit different from crystalline bonds. Okay, so ice has crystalline bonds. You know, it has a six-sided symmetry, and a lot of times it comes in cubic shapes and stuff. And then metals don't really have a shape to them, but they have a, a rigid lattice that they form. And, uh, and then other, you know, like, uh, what do you call that stuff? Uh, graphite is carbon, and it comes in sheets. And you can make carbon into dodecahedrons. Those are called, uh, what do they call those? Uh, they call them uh, dodecahedrons. Car like carbon, you can make a carbon-60 molecule that forms a, not a dodecahedron, but a zillion-ahedron. You know, it's all regularly spaced. And I think they can do carbon-24 and carbon-60. So, but anyways, everything is going to be bound together, and that's what makes a solid. It's bound together. And, but a liquid, the, the H2O molecules, they'll still be attracted. You know how it works, Sedora? The hydrogen on one... H2O molecule gets attracted to the oxygen on another. That's called hydrogen bonding. And guess where hydrogen bonding is a critical bonding feature? DNA. It was one of the things, one of the cool things they found out about DNA, that the way that the genetic code is encoded is apparently with hydro, hydrogen bonding is, is one of the things. And that's from, you know, from water, from the oxygen side of water to the hydrogen side of another water. And that's what gives us liquid droplets. They don't have crystalline shape, but they have a, they'll form a sphere. They'll still have enough weak bonding. And most stuff, you know, like a liquid gold will form a, a sphere too if you throw it around, you know. All right. Anyway, so this table from a, a recent exam. So I've got specific heat on there. Uh, I got some melting points. And over here, latent heat of fusion. All right, L subscript F. So that's where we break the intermolecular bonds. To go, so we break apart the crystalline bonds, Sedora, to get liquid bonding, you know, a flowable liquid. Um, and this is the amount of energy we have to evacuate if we're cooling a liquid to form a solid. So liquid water to solid water, we have to cool 
we have to evacuate 80 calories per every gram of liquid water if we want to freeze it. And we, that's what we do. That's what, you know, if you have an ice machine in your fridge or any ice machine you ever see, that's what they do. Every gram of water goes through there, 80 calories have to be evacuated out the back, out the back door. All right? And when that happens, you get a gram of solid ice. All right? Now, heat, melt, heat. Here's our first heat, melt, heat problem. We're going to make a cup of tea for a polar bear up by the North Pole. One up by Santa's workshop where they got a lot of cold ice. All right? So here's our problem. Go ahead and jot this down. And, you know, that's all fanciful polar bears in the North Pole and stuff. But, it, but you know, it's a convenient way to visualize having 400 grams of water ice at 268 Kelvin. That's below the freezing point. How many Kelvins below the freezing point is that? Five. Right. All right, so we have a delta T of five. So when we heat this to 373... We got to get to 273 first. And then we got to melt it. You know, so we're going to add, you know, 400 grams. We're going to take, you know, a bunch of calories to start heating it up to 273. And then all of a sudden at 273, the temperature, the thermometer starts to stall. At 273, you know, you, get, you got your propane burners rolling, they're adding heat. But it's not increasing the temperature. And why is that? Because you're melting it. This is the Chuck Norris activity. Busting up a criminal enterprise. Okay, and you, the heat is busting up those crystalline bonds. And when all, so for every gram, 80 calories. So this one's 400 times 80. So it's a lot of calories just to make it into a liquid. And then all the thermal energy from your propane tanks we'll start raising the liquid water temperature from 273 up to 3. So you've got a couple delta T's here to think about. All right, so let's get all this stuff mapped out. So I hope you, by now, listening to me blab my big mouth about it for the past three minutes, you've now got this jotted down in your notes. But we'll, we'll keep working with it in case you miss something. All right, so here's our calculation example. 400 grams of ice. And let's just write down the stuff that we know. For melting H2O, uh, you need 396 kilojoules per kilogram or 80 calories per gram. And hey, you guys, we're going to use 80 calories per gram. You know, we, could, we could do it in kilojoules and kilograms if we wanted, but we'll do calories and grams. That's good. We'll call it good. All right, so that's the one that we're going to use. Latent heat of melting. Now we're not going to go past the boiling point. The boil, we're going up to 373, but not 374. So we're not going to vaporize anything. We're just going to get it right to the boiling point. All right. Um, so we don't have to worry about the latent heat of vaporization. But we have to heat it, and we have two different specific heats. We have 0 0.50 calories per gram Kelvin for the ice. So the first 5 Kelvin from 268 up to 273, here's my specific heat. But then I melt all of it. And then I have liquid water. And then after it's all melted, then each calorie I add will raise one Kelvin for every calorie and every gram. And I got 400 grams, so I'm going to have to add a lot of calories. Just to, you know, I'm going to have to add 400 calories of heat to go from 273 up to 274. All right. And if I'm going all the way to 373, I got a lot more calories to add in there, right? Now we're going to do it all by calculation, okay? So our strategy is this, okay? We're going to heat the ice up from 268 to 273. 
Delta T is 5 Kelvin. And then we're going to melt all of it at 273. So my thermometer seems to be stuck while I'm melting it. Because solid water and liquid water, they don't care. You know, you can convert them back and forth, but, you know, they're perfectly happy to cohabitate. So that's where we use 80 calories per gram. We're going to use the latent heat of fusion at that melt stage. But then we got 400 grams of liquid H2O at 273. And we want to bring it all the way up. And we're making a cup of tea. So you got to make it nice and hot for your friend the polar bear. Uh, and so you got another 100 Kelvin from 273 liquid water all the way up to liquid water 373. And that's going to give us a certain number of calories. Now, anything above that is going to turn, start turning liquid water into gaseous water. So we're not going to add anything more than that. So we're just going to get it up to 373 and then go ding. I'm finished. Let me make my tea for my buddy. And 400 grams, that's like almost a water bottle. You know, water bottle is 500 grams of water. You know, and so this is a, this is a good, cup of, good cup of tea. So here we go. For heating, we got two heating phases. Heating up the ice, heating up the liquid water. We're going to use Q equals MC delta T. For the melting point, freezing point transition, Q is going to be equal to the number of grams mass M times latent heat of fusion. Okay, latent heat of fusion is 80. And we got 400 grams, so this is going to be 400 times 80. So this is the second one here is actually, oh, gosh. There we go. So the second one here is the cinchy one. All right. So let's kind of get our, our, and you know what, guys? Nothing in this calculation of heat melt heat, no single calculation is super difficult. But you got a bunch of them to organize, and you got to keep track of it all. So let's just put it all together. All right. Temperatures, okay, initial and final, 268 Kelvin, 373 Kelvin. And I got a phase transition in there, Damien. So I got to put in my 273 because that's going to lead to two different delta T's. Now, both of my delta T's are positive. Yeah, I haven't memorized those other guys' names, so I don't know what to call them. Bob and Bill, I guess. Anyways. Um, so my delta, so 268. Another 5K, you're up to 273. 273 up to 373, that's another 100K. So those are two separate delta Ts. So I'm going to have two different Q equals MC delta Ts. All right? And then I got my phase transition. That's the cinchy one. All right, first heating. And I'm not doing them in, in order. I'm just doing both of my heating and then my melting. The melting comes in between, but we'll just do them in this order. You don't have to do them in any order. All right, so here's the first one. MC delta T. M is 400 grams. Solid water. C is 0 0.50 calories per gram. Kelvin. And for this problem, I start at 268. And to get to the end of the ice regime, 5 Kelvin. So delta T is 5 Kelvin. And if you calculate that out, get your calculators out and double, double check me. These are all correct, but just, you know, you, you know, you're going to have to do it on homework. You may as well verify once. And actually, I have a clicker question for you when we're done with this. So make sure your clicker is still out. Okay, so the first heating is 1,000. Now I'm going to skip forward and do the second heating. I'm going to I'm going to bypass the the melting equation just for a second. So this is MC delta T, but now this one has a different delta T. I'm going from 273 up to 373. All right? And then I pour out my tea water and make a cup of tea. 
All right, so this is still 400 grams. So we're assuming that we're not uh, losing any grams of H2O. So no maniac is sneaking into the kitchen and hijacking any of the ice. All right, then he'd be off. So we're assuming 400 grams, nothing leaks out. And if it's liquid, it's 1.00 calories per gram Kelvin. And it's going 100 Kelvin up to 373. So you multiply that out, ding, 40,000 calories. All right, verify me if you want. All right, now we'll go to the middle step. I saved it for last. It's the easy one. You can do them in any order you want. Uh, and I already alluded to this one. Just, you know, 80 calories per gram times however many grams you've got. And we've got 400, so that's 32,000 calories. Okay. So let me pause for questions. Oh, one more thing. Uh, the total heat energy budget is just the sum of all these three. Okay, so that's 73,000 calories. And you may say to yourself, Dr. B, what do I care about this? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's kind of a fanciful example, you know, giving a cup of tea to a polar bear. But I'll tell you who does ca calculate these kind of things, NASA. You know, you put a guy in an Apollo capsule heading for the moon or up in the space shuttle, the space station, they're subject to extreme cold and extreme heat up there. So when they're on the dark side, of the, you know, they're going around the, the dark side of the earth, you know, away from the sun, they're go, their machine is going to cool off significantly. Space shuttle, space station, and on the sunny side of the earth, they're going to get a lot of solar heat gain from the sun. It, they could get really hot. Okay, so they have to, you know, be able to handle that. So there's a lot of heating and cooling. Plus they got a they they have food up there, and I guarantee you that a lot of their food is frozen, because it's you know. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's, I'm guessing that a lot of their food is frozen. So they got to thaw it out if they want to heat if they want to eat it. Okay, that takes energy. You know, they got those big solar panels up on the um, space station. It's electrical energy. You gotta have enough electrical energy to, you know, to to zap those uh, fish sticks or whatever it is they eat up there in space. Uh, so those guys, you know, if you ever watch that movie Apollo 13, they were trying to figure. They were trying to get those guys back to Earth. If you raise your hand, if you've seen that movie Apollo 13, okay, it's a great movie to watch, if, especially for this class. Those guys were freezing their you-know-what off on the way back because they turned off all the heaters. You know, they would get, they got plenty of heat from the sun as they were going through space between, because they were out in the sunlight most of the way. And so it was enough to keep up, they were freezing their you-know-what off, but they were still okay. And they saved all the battery power to start the thing back up just before re-entry. And that was the big drama. You know, how do they get them you know, back and how do they get them to re-enter safely? And so they had to know all the amount of energy that they had in their batteries. And, uh, you know, it was, and, and, and then that was a true story. I mean, you could talk to the guys. John Aaron, he's the guy that figured it out. He got those three men back safely to the earth. An interesting guy, John Aaron. But this is a, you know, nobody's up there making cups of tea for polar bears. But I guarantee you that NASA is trying to figure this stuff out as a matter, of, you know, all the time. Heat, heat management, managing the heat budget of a spacecraft is, is not a simple thing. Question. Because that's the total energy budget for the process that you have before you taking 400 grams Desiree from 268 Kelvin all the way up to 373 and then pour in your tea. All right, so that's our task. So when I ask you, you know, the heat melt heat problem, I'm asking you what is the total energy budget for the task that I'm giving, and I'm about to give you a task. All right, so here, here we go. Oh, 
Let's go back. Question. Where did I get the 80 calories per gram down here in the third equation block? Right here. Um, that came from the table of latent heat, the, the, the last column. The latent heat of fusion, L subscript F. And I had a bunch for, I had water, I had gold, uh, silver, and aluminum. Remember that on that table? It's something that you're going to look up. And hey, you guys on exam three, if I give you, you're going to see a table like, like the one you just saw on exam three, because you're probably going to have to do something like the heat melt heat problem you're about to, to do together. All right. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Because I don't, I don't memorize those. I don't think anybody memorizes that kind of stuff. Unless, you know, the guys at NASA that do it all the time, they probably haven't memorized, but that's because they use it all the time. But I would just expect you guys to look that stuff up and know how to use it, know what it means and when to use it. That's, the, that's what you got to know. Winfield. So um, how does this connect to so many, so many ways out How did I get what? Seventy-three thousand. Yeah. Um, I add up all three of the Qs. One thousand plus forty thousand is forty-one thousand. Plus thirty-two thousand, seventy-three. All right. So that's the total. If you raise your hand, if if you have like a camper or an RV or even your house, or you have a cabin up in the woods that has a propane stove. Anybody have a propane stove? Do they rate the, and you, you gotta buy a tank, right? And do they, how do they rate the amount of energy in the tank? In BTUs or something like that? <laughs> hey, Dad. Yeah. You know, if you, if you have a propane tank, Winfield, you know, propane stove, you know, you buy a cylinder for it or, you know, a big cylinder and it's going to have a certain amount of energy in it. it. Probably not in calories. They probably have BTUs, British thermal units, but, and British thermal units, you can convert those over to calories too. Uh, but so you have to know, and if you're in a spacecraft, that's all you got. You take up there what you have what you need and maybe a little extra and if you run out you run out you can't do any you can't make any more coffee and so they have to budget so it's a budget process and they've got to be able to know all that stuff and that's how they do it add up add them all up all right here we go heat melt heat for you and for me all right now it's a it's a calculation question so take a few minutes to work with your neighbor. And here it is. Hundred twenty. So it's not 400, it's 120 grams. And it doesn't start at 268, it's a little bit colder, 260. All right, it's all right, you can handle that. And the target temperature is not 373, it's just 300. So you don't have to go up as far. But you can handle that. And so Winfield, we want the total energy budget. So all three Qs, and then add them up. Okay, go to it. And let me start the question. Okay. Hit refresh if your calculator, tur if your clicker turned off.
I see some correct answers. Uh oh. Uh, you're going to have a whole number. It's going to be a big whole number. I see some. Nobody should be having anything to the nearest thousandth or anything. So if you have something, point something, 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 you better double check. Can I talk to you after class for just a bit? Sitting in this chair over here is not comfy. Three hours. Don't forget to hit the sand key. Almost had me there.
One minute. One minute. Starting now. Thirty seconds. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, raise your hand if you had twenty four hundred. No, no, no. Wait a minute, that's not right. Raise your hand if you had 13,620. Nice. Excellent. Seven, you know what? I think you guys did better than the 9 o'clock section. All right. We're going to dismiss a few minutes early. Homework. Shh. Before you go. Uh, uh, uh. Not quite. Don't evacuate yet. Homework 16, I'll probably give you two different heat melt heat and a bunch of other thermal equilibrium type questions. All right, you're dismissed. I'll see you on, on Tuesday. Now you can go.